Hello, buddy. How's it going? And welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember that the best podcast, not the worst podcast, is just the All Right Podcast. <laughs> so we're back with another episode, and you're probably wondering, Anthony, where are you? You're not on screen. Um, it's not about me. It's about the guest. Um, it's about the guest that we have on right now that you can see. Hello, Stevis, Stephen Thomas Ford. That's what you like to be called. <laughs> yes, yes, perfect, perfect. Um, righty old guys. So the, the the guest for this week is Stephen, uh, and Stephen is a filmmaker. So we're gonna get into all of that right now um, but don't worry as the weeks go on and so hopefully we can get more cameras more equipment and you know by the time Stephen comes back if he comes back after this podcast um, we'll, we'll be more and more prepared and more equipped um, but yeah Stephen please in- introduce yourself to the people out there that are watching right now and uh, you know people that know you don't know who you are and, yeah. and the looks of that she's a lot of pressure <laughs> 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 yeah so basically uh i've been writing for about um it sounds bad when you say it, but i've been writing for about over 10 years uh yeah probably i'm, I'm 33 now uh i've been writing since i'm about 20 i'd say yeah 20 i started script writing anyway i'm writing script writing since i'm about 20 uh, i went to inchcore college of further education and I literally just went there because I had no idea what I wanted to do after leaving. So grades were shit. And I was like, don't know what I'm going to do. Mum and dad were saying, you have to do something. So I was like, I'll go do creative writing. One of the modules turned out to be uh, script writing. So it was mainly it was mainly TV and all theatre. And I thought, like, I didn't... The guy that was teaching us was a guy who'd done story... He'd done story editor, I think, for uh, Fair City. And he'd, he'd done some theatre stuff for uh, BBC and all and I just I just didn't get on with him and I, I just didn't like him at the start and I think because of that then I just I didn't make the effort in the class and uh, I used to come up with some stupid excuses like you know just because I, I didn't want to do the work and I remember one day I actually did the work and I came in and I wrote something and he said geez you have a real talent for this like and just because I no one had ever said to me you have a real talent at, at writing like you know because I'd been good at English in school, but no one never said, Jesus, you're gonna, you have a real talent for that. Something about what he said just made me think, Jesus, maybe this is something. And so I started applying myself in the class, and, and I started, you know, I, I did great, and I got distinctions and everything, and I thought, this might be something for me, like, you know, because I'd always loved films, but I never knew what script writing was, I didn't have a clue, like, you know. I never thought about how was that film written, and, you know, we, we did college plays and everything, and I just absolutely loved it, like, you know. And from then on, I just, for years then, was just basically writing on my own, uh, just bought a big, huge uh, script screenwriter's bible and that was literally like the bible like you know and for years i just i just learned myself like you know and i did uh the odd creative writing course in the writer center i think in city center and stuff like that and i just was just writing just full-on writing for years and years and years and nothing was happening and i was in and out of depression i was thinking this is just this is not meant to be like this is this can't be right like you know if i'm good at this like everyone says i should be getting somewhere with it like you know and uh it was only when i set up a a group for screenwriters because I thought right screenwriting isn't for me it's not meant to be I'm just not I'm not good at it I thought well maybe I'll set up a group then because I'm doing it long enough now and I can help other pe- other writers who are starting off we can all share our work and everything and it was only when I set that up and, and we're going for like five years now uh, it was only when I set that up I started learning more about screenwriting and that world and what it takes to actually get your work out there and thinking okay maybe I'm not that bad at screenwriting maybe it's just really hard to get your work out there like you know so uh, I was surprised because when I set the group up I thought I know everything about screenwriting like I know it all and these people would come in who'd been writing for 20 years and 30 years and I'd be like fuck hell like you know and I'd be like this, so this is how hard it is like you know and now all the years on I'm still learning something new every now and again like you know I still have guests in the group and um, you were there for when we had Christopher Lockhart you know and that was only like not even a year ago and he was saying stuff that I was like I never do this I didn't have a clue like you know I was shocked like you know because you know yourself he's brutally honest like but yeah. he knows what he's talking about and um, so anyway I got back into writing then because I think uh, it was just always meant to be something that I was supposed to do and so every time I kind of went through these bouts where I was like oh I'm not meant to do this I, it always kind of called out to me you know that way I always came back to it and I think that's always the case when you you know when you're meant to do something like whether it's directing or writing or photography or whatever uh, if you're meant to do it it'll always come back to you like you know, no matter how much no matter how many jobs I've had and I've had so many jobs that have never worked out I always end up going back to writing like it's always there for me so uh, eventually I got kind of once I had the group and we were talking all the time every week we were meeting regularly um, and once I think you're talking to other writers and other creative creative people and people who kind of understand what all of that is like you start wanting to write more so I kind of got back into writing then I was just writing like 
nothing like you know trying to write features and getting halfway and like everyone knows how hard it is when you write a feature you know you it's it's just tough like you know so um i eventually then i somehow i don't know how it was got into doing shorts and i entered this competition basically that was like um it was in new york and it was like this competition where they give you kind of you enter it it, it was quite expensive now they give you all the details so they'll tell you what genre you're doing and they'll tell you they'll give you like one sentence like could be a baseball field a pawn shop and you have to do something with it so i was like right this is good like crime is my thing give me crime like i have to have a crime genre give me horror i hated horror at the time hated it i was like oh fuck i'm gonna be this is not gonna work out this is not gonna go well like it's horror so uh mine was horror um a pawn shop a creepy mask and i was like what the fuck for this i don't know what i'm gonna do like you know um because i wasn't into horror and i still am not into certain <laughs> types of horror which is gonna sound strange but um i was like i don't know what i'm gonna do so i think it was like i left it till about the night before and i stayed up all night just drinking coffee and red bull and i was up all night listening to bleeding you know theme songs from the scariest films i've ever i've ever watched and just uh typing this thing up and i was like i don't even know what i'm doing but i just thought okay well i've never written horror before but i'll just write it if it was happening to me what would scare the shit out of me like you know and by the end of the night i was on so much caffeine i was looking over my own shoulder i was like what the fuck is going on like you know but it was the caffeine and the no sleep like i was just like i was delirious like you know and uh, so i got it in at the last minute and uh, they had like a kind of a forum that you could put it up into what you were waiting for everyone to the judges and stuff to to hear back from so i said i go on like i'll throw it up in the forum like you know and uh, just started getting great feedback from everyone started saying oh it's really scary it's really good and i was like okay well these aren't judges but they're just other writers i was like this is kind of positive like you know um and so i all of a sudden then i started i knew some people from you know who had done stuff like i knew uh, zoe kavanagh who had done uh you know she'd done her own feature film demon hunter and i knew um another woman nadia ramateur who had done loads of stuff in, in america and stuff and so i was friends with them and i said well maybe i'll just send it on to them and see what their opinion is you know just just to see you know and um they both came back to me and they were like we could actually you, you could actually make this i could see this happen and i was like what i was like i just wanted your opinion like i didn't think you were gonna say it was good like you know and um zoe kavanagh actually said to me uh she was the one that said to me i could actually make this for you on a very small budget i even know a pawn shop and i was like really that's not what i was asking and she's like no i could do this for you like you know i was like oh my god this is brilliant like you know and um it didn't go anywhere in the competition didn't even get through to the next stages of the competition and that was kind of when i when i learned that like sometimes you'll write something that you know i think you're when you start off writing for years i was entering stuff and getting rejected and i thought it clearly must be rubbish if it's getting rejected but it doesn't necessarily always mean that you know it doesn't mean because you get rejected from a competition that it's not good it just means that competitions especially big ones have so many people entering them and sometimes their skills the level of talent is unbelievable that for you to even get to the qualifying round to the, the, before the qualifying round is just is amazing like you know so uh i kind of learned from that and i was like okay so if i get rejected from a competition it doesn't mean that it's awful like you know but um oh yeah uh, yeah sorry then after that then uh covid happened and for two years then loads of other shit happened in my life and you know my daughter was diagnosed with autistic i was diagnosed with autistic so there's this big whirlwind and i didn't write anything and nothing happened and then when covid all kind of not ended but with a kind of we'd kind of got used to it a bit um zoe kavanagh then kind of was busy with her other feature couldn't do the film and said to me she just simply said why don't you do it yourself and i was like i don't know anything about directing films like i didn't go to college to study films she's like you don't need to it's like the best experience you're going to get is from a film set she was like all you need to do is surround yourself with a crew of people who know what they're doing and they'll guide you through the way and i was like okay i'm gonna do this and like you know it's really kind of got myself pumped up and then like uh what i think i was about i was about um i think it was like two weeks before then i was really starting to regret it and i was like i think i could drop out now like i think could i do what i've done most of my life out of anxiety and just cancel it like and, and no one will know any better like and it'll be okay like you know so i kind of had that for a while and then i ended up doing it and it ended up being extremely stressful and also great at the same time um i directed once in college and i said i'd never do it again because i just hated it and i did this film and even though it was so tough i just felt like for such an anxious person i felt like it was the most comfortable i'd ever been in my whole life just being on a set with people that i didn't know i didn't know any of the people that were there and i was all of a sudden like just like i was already there like i was always there you know that way it's just this weird kind of comfort inside me that's like it was kind of like finally 
oh, I was supposed to be here all along or something, you know? It was so, it's hard to even explain, it was so strange. But um, from there on, I just, uh, we did that, and then I ended up kind of, almost kind of became an addiction, but it did. And um, I ended up, like, three weeks later doing another film, three weeks later doing another film, three weeks later, and then I went on and on. I've done about, I think I've done about seven films now. I did three by myself, and I did um, maybe six. I did three by myself, I did three with another person, and I've two more now. Uh, in May, and since then I just I just love it. Like you know, I just yeah. So it's yeah. That's my. I probably went on for that's too it. long. No, there. no, no. It's all right. <laughs> this is a podcast, so don't worry. It's all good. Um, but um, I want to go back to when you were talking about when you first started writing mm. and um and the likes of that. I want to ask you a question as well because I think a lot of screenwriters mm. do try to dabble into this, but they always yeah. come back to film. Was have you ever tried to write a theatre play? Uh have you ever thought of going I'd love to write as you know a, a script for theatre and probably direct that how how do you feel about that uh, I actually have because when we were in college like we did a bit of TV kind of stuff but it was mainly theatre scripts and we did some stuff in college where like we do an end of year play and we'd all write our own versions of this script that might be like six pages and all of it would get thrown into the one script like it would all be kind of contributed to the one and uh, I thought at the time, because we were given this book called The Tiger in Winter, and it's actually this amazing book of several different Irish plays, and they're so good. And I remember thinking, like, I never thought I would see myself reading a book of plays, like, ever in my whole life. And I thought, this is great. Like, when I leave college, I want to just write a play, and I want to put it on the theatre. Not obviously being naive enough to think that it's not that easy, like. But, um, yeah, it's, de- it's definitely something that, uh, now that I've seen more people doing it, um, and I know now that it is such a big thing in Ireland. I think plays are still probably bigger than films that I probably would one day be interested in writing a play and maybe directing it. Um, I want to ask as well because um, you know yourself, I, I make films as well. I'm only yeah. starting off now since probably 2019. Um, I want to ask as well, is there any films that you have at the moment that you've made or you know you're, that you're in the progress of and you go, do you know what, this could be a film and I could also adapt this into a play? Um, do you have any films that you've that you've done now that you goes I could write probably I could write this a bit longer probably change you know towards to make more comfortable for stage yeah. and say because with, with my one the Hitmen I think yeah. that's the first one now and the proper first yeah. proud one I've ever done is the you know what I mean the likes yeah. of that I can go I could adapt that into a play if I actually tried yeah. but is there anything for yourself that if you could think back on your films if if, if you if you want to name your films yeah. and then. Uh, just so other people, you know, if, if there's any out now, yeah. or they're all in film competitions at the yeah. moment as well. So, uh, and you're doing very well in that. Yeah. Um, and I'd like to ask more about that as well now in yeah. a few minutes. But um, yeah, what what film uh, would you say out of them yeah. or films that you could adapt into theatre? That's actually a really good question because I never thought of that. But now that you said it, I think the film that I did forever, um, I think would probably, could probably be done as a play because it's so short and it's so kind of contained in itself. Not sure the horror ones would work as well as a play. Uh, the two that I'm doing um, in May could probably be done as plays as well. I'd ne- I never actually thought about this. This is gonna this is gonna be something you're gonna put in my head now. I bet you. Um, but I'd never thought of that. No, I think the one forever is um, is a really short, just simple kind of contained like little love story about well, love and about death and um you know i i won this competition uh it won short film in one of these competitions and they sent me this lovely email uh saying that your film was really good it reminded us about what we have in life and what we have to hold on to and i thought oh my god that's a great you know kind great, of that's that's great log line or so yeah, as well like yeah. that sums up the film that's yeah. what i wanted it to be because when i wrote it uh, originally it was for um the no wi-fi the wicklow filmmakers group they were looking for films that were one minutes long uh, of course, at the time, I didn't realise that the whole, you know, one page, one minute thing isn't always necessarily the yeah. case. Like, so I did, like, two pages, and I was like, it's two minutes, like, you know, but realistically, it was probably about five minutes, like. But um, I did it and kind of entered it into that, and, and loads of them were like, I want to direct it, I want to do it. And, you know, um, I, I had someone was going to do it for a long time, nothing ever came of it. And then when I did Behind the Mask, and I was like, okay, I'm fairly confident that I'm capable of doing this. I was like, let's do forever next, you know? And I was like... 
let's do you want to do this film in a few months do you want to do this film in a few months and we just ended up doing it like you know um but but yeah sorry um my first film was behind the mask so that was a horror um my second film was sharp teeth which was a horror and that was my daughter was in that and that is probably one of those films that everyone i think has where it'll probably never see the light of day just because it was such a complicated shoe and the editor for months now has been driving themselves nuts trying to sort it out and it'll probably never see the light of day maybe be put up on social media at some stage but it's one of those films that probably will never be it just it, it was a pure example of i think everyone probably has one of those films or will have one of those films at some stage where something goes wrong or something doesn't work out to the point where you're like okay no one will probably ever see yeah. this film. like yeah. you know um i want to ask as well because you you mentioned yourself just there that your daughter was diagnosed with autism yeah. and, and you were as well yeah so i want to i want to ask this because i i, I done a film myself where i had to um direct the child for uh, this christmas yeah. it was because it was your daughter i'd say it was yeah. more easier but um was what it? was that ex- <laughs> no okay um, what was that experience like yeah. um you know directing your daughter um yeah. a, a, and and a child actor you know yeah. or and, and so what's the comparison to that and you know an, an adult yeah uh, and so and w- do you like directing um with, with, with different groups and, yeah. and genres and stuff like that as well yeah yeah so when i when i we directed sharp teeth like i le- i kind of learned from that where um any child but especially you know a child who's autistic and might have like really bad anxiety which at the time i think was just a really bad time for my daughter in particular that her anxiety was worse than it had ever been and i think we thought that she she really wanted to do it and so i didn't want to say okay we'll just cancel the whole thing like i was like are you sure up until the last day are you positive if we don't want to do it it's fine and she was like no i really want to do it dad and i think she just didn't uh i, I think neither her or me or mom realized how overwhelming the whole process would be and we just had a lot of complications like um we were just like you know i had to run all the way out and pick up the first ac because he was late and so i got back and we were late starting and she was waiting around there was a lot of waiting around and so i really learned from that um in terms of like i should have done all of her stuff straight away first of all you know um and instead i had other stuff and she was like sitting there waiting just bored over her mind like you know so i think even whether you're autistic or not i think you know with kids you need to just get all their stuff out of the way first you need to have you know stuff there to kind of keep them occupied while they're waiting for stuff to be done because something as simple as like you don't realize how long it takes from to set the camera up from here to over there like you know for different shots and all that's even long for a child to wait like that could be 10 15 minutes maybe sometimes depending on lighting and all that stuff and these are things that you learn as you go along like you know um like when i do that one in may that that's where it's going to be early we're going to have all our stuff done uh i'm going to make sure there's stuff there for and all of that kind of stuff and so i'm kind of ready and i'm prepared for it you know yeah but um i would say the plus side to directing like you know your own child is that you can tell them things that you can say to another actor yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so like i like i don't like to say to actors uh and i'm in no way like a, an expert but i don't like to say to them this is how you should like i don't like to say you know i don't like to repeat a line back to them and say you should say it like this like you know so with her i can say no i want you to say it like this like so because she's my daughter you know so yeah. i would say that that you can just say like you know say whatever you want to them basically yeah. <laughs> like, you know, i, I want to ask as well um I, i'm asking about actors and how to work with actors yeah. and how you find it I, I i know that you've done some co-directing with yeah. um um Sinead is is one of them yeah. i think and so like that i want to i want to ask as well what what's it like to i've i've never experienced i've always done yeah. i i i like control i like being yeah. in, it's a horrible thing to yes. have yeah. um but i like that yeah. um because as a screenwriter yeah. and if you write something you know exactly how this is going to go what yeah. way you want to go and to be on the same page as someone else it's very difficult and yeah. um, so i just want to ask what was your experience like working with a different director yeah. or and so like that as well well 100 percent agree with what you just said there and that's me to a t as well and that's where i think uh no offense to Sinead it's nothing personal I'll probably never co-direct with anyone ever again it's because I like to have control I like to write something and if I know I'm the only one directing it I know while I'm writing it what way it's going to be shot and what way I'm going to have this done and, and I just I'm the same like I like I realized that after doing I think it was three or four films with Sinead even though she's great I realized that no I just need to I'm a control freak I need to have all the controls director like you know but uh it is it is really it's a different experience because you know you might not have well you don't have full control over everything you have to kind of be willing to share the control so you know something Sinead might say I like this and I might be like well I don't really like that you know and she'd be like really but 
like, oh, you can't. And I'd be like, but I don't. And be like, sometimes it won't work out, or sometimes you'll just say, okay, well, let's try it your way, and then we'll try it my way as well, and we'll see, like, yeah. you know. So it's really, it's it's completely different to do it on your own, because you have to be willing to compromise, you have to be willing to work together, you have to be willing to hand over control, which is extremely difficult if you're someone who likes control, which I yeah. do, yeah. because, uh, like, one, one or two of the ones that I wrote uh, by myself that we directed together, like, I wrote it, and I knew kind of what way every way was going to be, but not some shots necessarily. Sinead might have been like, oh, I don't really like that one, though. And I'd be like, but I already have this in my head, though, and I want it done yeah, like this, yeah, you know? Yeah. So it is a matter of like, it, it is, it's completely different. Um, It's not, it's not, it's, it's a good experience, a good learning curve. It's good because you also have someone on a positive side to lean on who, if you're not comfortable with something, you can say, what do you think about this? Yeah. Which at the time, I wasn't really, and I was like, okay, well, I, I felt comfortable having Sinead, especially, I could say, listen, Sinead, like, I'm not really sure about this, what do you think? And I just felt a bit more comfortable having her yeah. there, you know? And then after three films, I said, listen, I have to, I was getting too comfortable, and I was like, no, listen, I need to get back and do it on my own, or I'll end up co-directing with everyone, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I, I did the keynote, and I ended up co-directing with a girl, um, but I, I kind of was only going uh, to say, I, I went, I said, I'll go to it and I'll just help someone out. Like, I don't want to direct or write anything because I've done enough and I have a few things coming up. I'd rather help someone. So I helped a girl, um, Desiree, that was doing a film and it was this really funny and also really beautiful kind of comedy drama. Uh, and it was a really good experience as well because she was acting in it. So I would kind of, we were both kind of co-directing, but it was just a great feeling just to be able to help her out, like, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, it is. It's, it's a completely different experience, but it's it's also can be really good sometimes as well, like, you know? Um. So we only have, I mean, like, it's we only have, like, about another eight, nine minutes. So right. I want to get into, you know, re real help for the voice. Mm. Um, obviously, if we have you back on and stuff like that as well, if yeah. you come back on, um, we'll get more into yourself and, you know, background story mm. and the likes of that. But I want to ask as well... Um. A very important question that I think is very helpful towards any screenwriter mm. or director, you know, upcoming yeah. uh, inspiring directors or so. What if you had a toolbox? Mm. Okay, you know, you know the famous saying, the toolbox. Yeah. If there's three things or five things you can put in your toolbox that you think is essential, and mm. you can give that advice to someone that's watching right now, yeah. and I know this on the spot now in a bit, yeah, yeah. But I'm just, I'm just curious now because um, I, I like um different people's answers and stuff like that yeah. as well. What would your what would be in your toolbox? Okay, now what would be in my toolbox for people who like want to get into writing, want to yeah, script writing. Um, right, okay. Let's let's stick with script writing now right, for right. for now. Right, so I'd say the most important thing is probably resilience. You need to be extremely resilient to be a script writer because you need to be strong, like because you are going to get bashed around uh, without even realizing it because it's so hard. It's so like anyone who writes maybe it's just me i find writing sometimes because you're getting so into it i find it extremely emotionally and mentally draining you know so it's really tough for you to pour so much of yourself into a script and then when you come out of it or at least when i come out of the script it's like you're just you have to get used to the real world again after coming out of that script and then you then send that off to someone or you send it into a competition and get rejected and you're like you could almost cry like you know yeah. so you need to be extremely resilient you need to be you know tough and patient i would say actually it's probably really important because it's one of those things that like you could be doing your whole entire life and you may never get to see your film on the big screen yeah um you may never get to be at the oscars you never may never be at the golden globes or whatever um but i like it used to be my dream i used to say well i want to be at the oscars and now it's just my dream just to do a short film that everyone can see and be like, okay, I really like this, you know? Yeah. No, I think it's, but yeah, I think, you know, resilience and uh, perseverance, you know, being strong, tough, um, and also never giving up either because, like, I was writing for, like I said, over 10 years, and it doesn't necessarily mean I'm a bad writer. I think it just makes me a writer, you know, because most people will be struggling their entire life. Yeah. Uh, I might not ever get there and if i do i could be 40 i could be 50 who knows like you know yeah. um like i'm nearly 34 now and i only started directing last november like you know mm. and i've done like i'll have done nine short films in this in a whole in a year like you know mm. um which i'd never thought about but when we did behind the mask the guy who was dop on it said to me like i have no doubt that you will more than likely by the end of next year probably have your feature planned out completely like you know yeah. and i hadn't thought about it but i actually am at the moment and i was like 
you know, okay, you know, people were like to me, why don't you do a feature? And I was like, well, I'm not afraid to do a feature. I just really love doing shorts. Like, you mm. know, I really, really love them. Like, I love doing these shorts I've done, like, forever, where it's just this really simple, like, contained story. And it's just one moment from a larger story, like, you know. And I just love that. And, I, I, like, I, I probably would do shorts forever, like, you know. Yeah. But I think it's it's time now that, like, I probably you know move on to on the features uh just because i suppose i am holding back a little bit because i'm like shorts are so to me they're not easy but i'm so comfortable in doing them for so long that i have to kind of now go out and try and do a feature and see how that goes um but yeah i would say you know strength resilience perseverance uh patience um I can't think of any because you put me on the spot. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> that's what I like to do to guests. Um, I, I don't like asking guests, um, um, you know, I send them these bunch of questions or yeah. so before they do it. And if, if, if a guest asks me, what I do is, is I send them questions and then I ask them completely different <laughs> questions because I like the realism. I want to yeah, see the yeah. person vulnerable yeah. as much as they can. Yeah. Um, and oh, I you love know, that. I love the questions. They're great questions. Yeah. So um, you, you, I think that I think for your toolboxes, it's very important. And I understand what you're saying by, you know, um, the likes of being patient and it, it, mm. it does mentally drain you. Yeah. It, it really does. Um, just one second. Yeah. Hey, guys, this is Sergeant Sergey. There's no rush or anything. What time are you home? 11, obviously. What time do you have? It's uh, 10 to 11. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so still open I'll be finished about five minutes and then I'm going to pack up. Yeah, no, no, no rush at all. Okay, thanks, yeah, thanks. Much. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, right, so, yeah, as I was saying, um, yeah, it can be mentally draining yeah. and you put your heart and soul. And I think when you're going through a certain phrase, you were saying earlier on that, um, you know, um, anxiety and depression, mm. if you're writing a character, y you, without knowing, put your, whatever you're going through at that time goes into your story. It might not be a main character, mm. but there's some mean in our mood that will sit into a scene yeah. And I've noticed that. Um, and I think with the likes of uh, short films and you're saying that, you know, mm. you're, you you want to do it, but there's just something holding you back. It's, yeah. it's the fear, it's the oak. Um, I understand completely. And I think that, me personally, I think that people need to make short films forced to mm. get used to this, the atmosphere because it can be draining, it can yeah. be stressful working yeah. with so many people. Nothing will ever go to plan on set. No. You could have everything planned perfectly, second by second, something will fuck up. Absolutely, um, 100%, yeah. And I think, that, I think that the toolbox that you just gave was, was real positive, and I think that a lot of people could take from mm. that aspect and, you know, apply it to themselves. Yeah. Uh, and so, um, yeah, guys, you know yourselves. Um, this podcast only a half an hour. Um, you heard someone coming in there. <laughs> um, I'd love to get you back on and probably yeah. do an hour one because, you know, I'm pretty sure if we sat here and I had a camera that can hold more memory, we could do it like a Joe Rogan <laughs> podcast yeah, for three, probably. four hours. I swear yeah. to God, I think we could. It's because you're talking about something that you love, like, you know, yeah. when you're talking about something that you love and you have a passion for it. Uh, but yeah, I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Uh, I seen a video recently, Quentin Tarantino posted, it was a really old video and he said the same thing. He said, uh, something about like it's not a story if something from your life isn't seeping into into that story and it'd be the same for me for forever um it was my father-in-law passing away gave me the idea for that sharp teeth was like sleeping in my daughter's room one night and i thought this is creepy as fuck and that's how i got the yeah, idea yeah, for yeah, that yeah, yeah. behind the mask was the same uh was you know what would happen if i was in this situation and you know yeah so i i think yeah your your real life does uh sometimes we, sometimes you realize and sometimes you don't until someone says hey where'd you get the idea for this and you realize oh shit yeah that has a lot of relevance to me actually you know yeah. so yeah i agree with that it's 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 uh and it's very scary to share personal stuff out to yeah. someone and them to reject them so yeah, as well absolutely. um right guys so we only literally have a minute left uh before the uh camera goes off yeah. um <laughs> so i just want to say thanks very much for coming on uh, it has been a short one now. I wish we could do longer. Um, but, yeah, hopefully by the time you come back on, I'll have more people and stuff like that as well. But, um, yeah, thank you so much yeah, for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's uh, great no, to be here. No problem. Um, yeah, guys, so all the links down below to Stevens is, you know, Instagram and, you know, and, and the likes. And you also have a Facebook page as well where yeah, you know, yeah. with a group you can do that. Um, yeah, guys, so this is it for this episode. Um, I'm not sure who we're going to have on next week for a guest. I have to start planning them. Um, but, yeah, guys, thanks so much for coming on. Remember, it's not the best podcast, not the worst podcast. It's just the All Right Podcast. Guys, chat to you next week. Goodbye.